Y News with Angelo Castro III, William Theo, and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. The government continues its assessment of the affected areas in Leyte following the strong earthquake that rocked the province yesterday. Lea Ilagan will tell us why. Authorities are continuously working to determine the extent of the damages caused by the magnitude 6.5 earthquake in late yesterday afternoon. Government personnel continue to conduct assessment in affected areas, especially in mountainous places near the epicenter of the earthquake. Ito po yung tinatawag natin na Rapid Damage Assessment and Needs Analysis. Ito po yung ina-undertake ng ating pamahalaan para makasiguro kung meron tayong mga kababayan na dahil sa malakas na pagyanig, eh may mga pangangailangan na kailangan ay bigyan ng agarang ayuda ng ating pamahalaan. NDRRMC spokesperson Rumina Marasigan released the names of the two casualties, namely Jerry Movilla, 40 years old, who was buried in the rubble of a collapsed three-story building. Meanwhile, 19 years old Risa Rosales also died after hollow blocks collapsed on her. 72 were reported injured, 43 were in Kanaga, Leyte. Three were in Ormoc City and 26 were in Carigara, Leyte. All the roads with cracks in Ormoc going to nearby Leyte remain possible. Motorists are still told to take caution. Manatili tayong kalmado. Pero alerto, kung hindi po mahalaga ang inyong biyahe, manatili po tayo sa ating mga tahanan para po makaiwas po tayo sa anuman pong peligro. Classes at all levels are also suspended in Tacloban City and Dormok City. In Haro later where the epicenter of the earthquake was located, cracks were found in two buildings of the Bienvenido Celebre National High School in Barangay Ugiao. A landslide also occurred in Mount Amandiwing, Barangay Rubias, Haro, Leyte. Electricity supplies has also been affected in most parts in eastern Visayas, particularly in Leyte, southern Leyte, Cebu, Bohol, and several areas in Samar. Meanwhile, Fibox recorded 241 aftershocks at 5 in the morning today since the strong earthquake hit Leyte yesterday. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Aguinaldo. The Ormoc City government has begun distributing relief goods to residents in the hard-hit areas of the earthquake. Meanwhile, the municipality of Kananga Leyte is now under state of calamity. Vice Mayor Elmer Codilia said it will allow the local government to utilize its calamity fund when the need arises. Currently, the local government has 2.7 million pesos in calamity funds. Officials in Ormoc and Kananga are conducting assessments in their areas to determine the damage left by the strong earthquake. The provinces of Panay, Cebu, and Negros might experience rotational brownouts as operations of a power plant in Leyte is currently stalled. Nel Maribohok tells us why. Energy Development Corporations and the National Power Corporation continue to conduct assessments of earthquake-affected facilities that supplies electricity in Visayas region. The Department of Energy says electric grids, particularly in Leyte, Samar, and Bohol, lost 550 megawatts power. These areas have no electricity until now. It remains uncertain yet when the supply of power in the affected areas will return to normal. In marshalling facility, we believe that that can be repaired in three to five days. Yung mga planta mismo, uh, yung iba, hanggang ngayon hindi pa namin ma-access dahil sa mga landslide. So hindi pa kami makakabigay ng estimate kung kailan uh, babalik sa production ng mga planta. Our assessment is that we, as soon as, uh, because the spare parts are, uh, are ready, it's just a case now of uh, having to have uh, physical access to the uh, facilities that have to be repaired. DOE also warns of possible rotational brownouts in Panay, Negros, and Cebu as the electricity supply in these areas are connected to the geothermal power plant in Leyte. The Energy Department calls on the residents in the affected provinces to conserve electricity. It also calls for donations of generator sets in areas experiencing total blackouts. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Taguig City. 
Meanwhile, the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines is still uncertain as to when the power supply in quake-affected areas will be fully restored. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. The National Grid Corporation of the Philippines, or NGCP, is continuously assessing their transmission lines that were affected by magnitude 6.5 earthquake in the Visayas. NGCP reported that damaged installations include the Ormoc HBDC converter station, Ormoc substation, and the EDC-owned switchyard in Kananga, Leyte. The damage resulted to power loss in the provinces of Leyte, Southern Leyte, Biliran, Western Samar, Northern Samar, Eastern Samar, and Bohol Island. Meanwhile, Cebu and Negros Island experienced power interruptions but were immediately restored after several hours. Tower 18 of the Ormoc Tongonan line that connects Tongonan power plant to Ormoc substation lean. NGCP said, though the quake caused the tower to tilt, it can still be used provided that its stability is secured. NGCP towers were built by Napocor in 1986. We are designed up to a certain uh, de degree of the earthquake, but uh, of course they are already old towers. Even as it leans, it is capable of sustaining a flow of electricity. Once Tower 18 is confirmed reusable, power supply can be restored in Samar and Bohol, but with occasional interruptions due to thin supply. Given that we cannot uh, enter the area of marshalling, we cannot assess the status of the transmission uh, facilities there, including the high voltage. NGCP towers are now being replaced with towers resilient to typhoon and earthquakes. Ray Pelayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Japan will send aid to the victims of the recent magnitude 6.5 earthquake in Visayas. Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez says there are no details yet on the kind of aid Japan will send as it will depend on the result of the assessment of the damages caused by the earthquake. Japan also vows to help in improving the disaster preparedness plan of the Philippines. This is especially since Japan is one of the most earthquake prone countries in the world. So they said they will uh, definitely uh, assist us uh, in uh, disaster prevention. Uh, it's, it's an ongoing discussion, but in this particular case today, they offered assistance for, for the earthquake damage. Okay. Next on Y New. President Rodrigo Duterte grants presidential pardon to 10 political prisoners from the National Bilibid Prisons. Majority of Filipinos remain satisfied with President Duterte's performance according to the latest social weather station survey. And Meralco announces power rate hike for the month of July. Why News will be right back. President Rodrigo Duterte is expected to give the Filipino people a picture of what has been in the country under his first year in office in his, sec in his second State of the Nation address. Victor Cosari tells us why. During an interview in the program Get It Straight with Daniel Razon this morning, presidential spokesperson Ernesto Abella reveals that President Rodrigo Duterte's State of the Nation address is now having its final touches. They are making sure that the speech is well prepared. May report sa people's report. They call it people's report. Mm -hmm. Pero yung kwento ng presidente will be ililinyo. Siyempre, he's more, ano, he's, more, he's more visionary. So ang kanyang ang ipipresenta niya yung ano yung, of course, yung where we have been, what we promised, where we have been, and where we're going. The secretary added that the copy of the speech will be made readily available to the public right after the president's delivery. The Presidential Communications Operations Office recently released a teaser of the president's sauna wherein it showed a glimpse of the progress in the country in terms of economy, investments, employment, free education, and projects towards poverty alleviation, among others. One notable move that the Duterte administration has pushed, according to Abelia, is the president's independent foreign policy. 
ang gusto niya maiso, ang hindi lang maisoli kundi maiangat no unang-una that the Philippines become a truly functioning nation. We can make it. We we can be proud of being Filipino and mm -hmm. we can actually chart an independent uh, foreign policy and become a true nation among others. Meanwhile, as the president enters his second year in office, Secretary Abella says President Duterte will be focusing next on changing the form of government into federalism. Abella said the president believes that federalism will open more opportunities for development and progress of the country. Victor Posare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. President Rodrigo Duterte has received a high net satisfaction rating in his first year based on the recent results of the Survey of the Social Weather Stations, or SWS. Joyce Balancho will tell us why. High number of Filipinos are satisfied with the performance of President Rodrigo Duterte in the second quarter of his first year as the chief executive. The recent survey results of the Social Weather Stations, or SWS, conducted on June 23 to 26 reveal that 78% of Filipinos are content with Duterte's administration. 12% are dissatisfied, while 10% are undecided. This equates to plus 66 net satisfaction ratings, few points higher than his number last March 2017 and is considered the president's record high rating. His ratings increased in the Luzon and Visayas while it declined in Mindanao and the National Capital Region. Dito sa survey na to, nakita namin na ang latest net satisfaction rating ng Pangulong Duterte ay nasa plus 66 o kung sa classification ng SWS, ito ay very good. House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez says the president deserves the rating, saying he works hard and is a sincere and a decisive leader. Ifoga Representative Teddy Bagilat says popularity ratings cannot be an indication of real change and progress. It is a powerful tool which he hopes will not be used for authoritarian agenda. Bayan Muna Representative Carlos Zarate says the survey result proves the trust and confidence of Filipinos to the president but he believes that now is not yet the right time to gauge the performance of the president. Unprecedented yan dahil uh, umaasa pa rin ang mga mayang Pilipino. Humahawak pa sila doon sa pangako ni Pangulong Duterte na darating ang pagbabago. But eventually, kung tuloy-tuloy din itong mga neoliberal na mga policies no, at hindi matutupad yung ipinangako ni Pangulong Duterte, Mararamdaman at mararamdaman na ang masa ay ang mamamayang Pilipino ay mawawalan ng tiwala. Senator Antonio Trillanes IV notes that the Marawi crisis affected the public perception as shown in the survey results. The president maintains high support in Luzon and in Visayas, but the decline in numbers in Mindanao shows a different picture. Presidential spokesperson Ernesto Abeles says despite the surge of numbers in Mindanao, still majority of Filipinos are supportive to the decisions of the president. The data collection concluded on June 23 to 26, a month after PRRD placed the whole island of Mindanao under martial law. And it shows tacit public support to the president's action following the rebellion in Marawi. The SWS survey is conducted through face-to-face -face interviews with 1,200 people aged 18 years old and above representing Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. It has sampling error margins of plus-minus 3% of national percentage. Joyce Balancho, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Ten political prisoners can now start a new life after years of detention inside the new Bilibid prisons. Grace Kasin tells us why. A total of 10 political prisoners have been released after receiving presidential pardon from President Rodrigo Duterte. One of them is 56-year-old murder convict Jose Ungsod. Jose says he doesn't know how to start a life outside of prison after his 20 years in detention. What's more sad is that his parents died while he was in prison. He now plans to search for his siblings in their hometown. Jose is one of the 10 members of the National Democratic Front of the Philippines released last night after receiving a presidential conditional pardon. They feel both happy and sad as more than 400 of their colleagues are still detained. 120 of them they say are sick, while 30 are already in their old age. Ang kulungan ng parang sardinas, ilang oras na matutulog. Mga limang oras, pabalitan ng 30 din. 
para may pupwestuhan lang sa higaan. They are members of the second batch of NDFP detainees released under the Duterte administration. With their pardon, it's the condition that if they violate the law again, they will be sent back to prison. They're also calling on the government to pursue the peace talks. This is amid a statement of President Duterte that he will only allow the resumption of the peace talks when the rebel group NPA stops in extortion activities. It's plain extortion. And if they want to, to, to continue to resume the talks, one of the things that I would demand would really be that they stop the extortion activities. The newly released NDFP prisoners deny the accusation, saying they never commit extortion. Sa panig ng revolusyonaryo ng Tulusan, wala siyang ginagawa extortion, kundi bahagi ng kanyang paggobyerno. Niral na yan sa mahabang panahon. Kung ayaw niyang ituloy, edi siyempre uh, siya ang nagpasya nun. Grace Kasin, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The PNP Highway Patrol Group said the resolution on the Rent Sangla case filed before the Department of Justice might suffer delays. Monokson will tell us why. It was in February this year when Rafaela Anunciacion, the prime suspect in a Rent Sangla scam, was charged before the Department of Justice. But the Philippine National Police Highway Patrol Group wants to strengthen the case against her by gathering and presenting additional evidences. For now, HPG is in custody of one of Anunciacion's employees as the primary witness in the case. Ang gusto kasi nating mangyari dito is we can come up a solid case of syndicated stuff. Ah. Kasi yung syndicated stuff is uh, not a non-bailable case uh, para doon sa mga... Sa mga suspect natin. Currently, there are a total of 1,800 vehicles reportedly involved in the scam, but only more than 600 vehicles have been recovered and more than 400 have been released to their rightful owners. Meanwhile, more than 100 vehicles are still impounded due to incomplete documents necessary for their release. For its part, DOJ has formed a task force to speed up the investigation. But the police unit says the resolution of the case might suffer delay. Maybe the DOJ has uh, go through the ano, detail by detail dito sa, sa mga kasong to para wala tayong, ma, ano, wala tayong malagpasan. Aside from syndicated estafa, HPG is looking into the possibility of filing a case of economic sabotage due to the large number of victims and huge amount of money involved in the scam. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue. In other news, eight candidates for the next Supreme Court vacancy made it to the short list of the Judicial and Bar Council. Court of Appeals Associate Justice Japar Dimaampao, who hailed from Marawi City, topped the list with seven votes. Sandigan Bayan Justice Alexander Gesmundo also got seven votes. Six other CA justices made it to the list, which will be forwarded to Malacanang. President Rodrigo Duterte will have to pick from the said shortlist the replacement for Justice Jose Mendoza, who is retiring on August 13. <music> Meanwhile, some drivers and operators of transport network vehicle services are appealing to the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board, or LTFRB, to renew their accreditation and lift the moratorium on provisional authority. Joe Anano will tell us why. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board, or LTFRB, has yet to renew the accreditation of Transport Network Vehicle Services. Some TNV drivers and operators are worried that this might affect their livelihood. Thus, they are appealing that the agency grant the renewal of their accreditation at the soonest possible time. Kailangan din po namin maghanap buhay. So, paano po naman po kami kikita sa aming mga pamilya kung hindi po kami bibigyan ng chance na magkaroon po kami ng sarili naming trabaho? Apart from the renewal of application, the group is also asking the agency to lift the moratorium on the application of provisional authority. This is to give the drivers and operators the opportunity to apply for certification to make their operation legal. On July 11, the LTFRB is set to discuss the renewal of accreditation of Uber, Grab and U-Hop. Issues such as color of vehicles and complaints on some of their drivers are expected to be tackled. The agency emphasizes that the board needs scrutinize well if they will renew the accreditation of transport network companies. 
Meanwhile, pending applications submitted before the issuance of moratorium are still being reviewed by the board. If there are any applications prior to the moratorium, which was in July 2016, LTFRB is still processing their respective case holders. Um, and we will be dealing with them based on the merits. Grab PH said it has around 10,000 members. Uber refused to reveal the total numbers of its drivers and operators. But based on the record of LTFRB, there are only around 3,700 registered DNVS. The agency admits that currently, there is a huge number of Colorum vehicles in Metro Manila. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Phase 2 of the Laguna Lake Highway opens to the public today. The Department of Public Works and Highways believe that the highway will help in addressing the heavy flow of traffic in EDSA. Nel Maribohok tells us why. The Department of Public Works and Highways has now opened the Laguna Lake Highway that connects Taytay Rizal and Taguig City. The 6.9-kilometer stretch is part of the ML Quezon Taguig City to Napindan Bridge. The 10-kilometer four-lane road network is worth 1.2 billion pesos. Department of Public Works and Highway Secretary Mark Villar says the opening of the entire road network to the public would help ease traffic congestion in EDSA. Makakatulong din po to sa decongestion ng EDSA. So may mga options sila kung gusto nila pumunta sa tagig, pwede rin dito, gusto nila magbikutan. Pero eventually ang master plan namin, itutuloy namin to hanggang uh, Laguna. DPWH targets to complete the entire project until the end of the year. Aside from serving as the bypass road of EDSA, the DPWH and Taguig City local government also plan to make the stretch of the Laguna Lake Highway a tourist attraction. In Metro Manila, wala pang, ito yung pinakamahaba, newest lakeside, lakeside highway with pedestrian infrastructure, bike lanes. So, maging attraction na rin. The DPWH plans to submit its master plan next year to extend the highway up to Laguna. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Taguig City. And Moralco has announced a slight increase in electricity rates this July. Leslie Longboen tells us why. Meralco announces an increase of 8 centavos per kilowatt hour this month. From 8 pesos and 17 centavos per kilowatt hour in June, consumers will pay an overall rate of 8 pesos and 25 centavos per kilowatt hour this July. The refund translates to a reduction of 79 centavos per kilowatt hour. Meralco explains that the major reason for the increase in generation charge is the peso dollar exchange rate. From May to June, nagkaroon ng depreciation of the peso uh, from below 50 pesos per the US dollar to 50.47 pesos per US dollar in June. Tricycle driver Onofre Cabototan consumes almost 100 kilowatt hour per month. He sees no problem with the additional 8 pesos he has to pay this July. Okay lang naman bata kasi ang pag sinabing generation charge kung saan saan nanggagaling mga kuryente kasi hindi naman galing lahat sa Malampaya. So, may understood naman eh. Huwag lang yung uh, distribution charge ng tataas. Okay lang ko lang. Konti lang naman eh. Due to the electricity rate hike, those who consume 200 kilowatt hour a month will have an additional 15 pesos in their July bill. 23 pesos will be added for those who consume 300 kilowatt hour. If one consumes 400 kilowatt hour, expect an increase of 30 pesos and an addition of 38 pesos for those with 500 kilowatt hour consumption. Meralco meanwhile reminds that implementation of refund will be until August. Malaki talaga na bawas nito magmula nung nakaraang buwan, ngayong buwan at susunod na buwan. Pero magno-normalize na yung rates natin pagpasok na September. So yun yung kailangan paghandaan. Leslie Longboen, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasig City. The Commission sa Wikang Pilipino poses the proposal to make English the medium of instruction in schools across the country. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The Commission sa Wikang Filipino believes the House Bill 5091 filed by District 2 Representative Gloria Macapagal Arroyo is unconstitutional and anti-Filipino. The legislation proposes to make English language the medium of instruction anew in schools across the Philippines. It was in 1974 when DEPED imposed the use of Filipino as the medium of instruction in the country's system of education. 
The Commission says the bill violates Sections 6 and 7, Article 14 of 1987 Constitution, which say that the national language of the Philippines is Filipino. May official na pahayag ang Commission sa wikang Filipino na tumututol sa panukalang batas 1591 ni uh, Representante Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. Na una, ito ay labag sa Constitution. Kalawa, ito ay ang patayan ng kanyang panukalang batas ay walang siyentipikong uh, the National Committee on Language and Translation says such a proposal is contrary to the provisions of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization or UNESCO that the Filipino youth should learn of their mother tongue. Humihiling sa Kongreso ng Pilipinas at kay Pangulong Rodrigo Roa Duterte na ibasura huwag pagtibayin ang kontra-Filipinong House Bill Number 5091. Some academicians also express disapproval on the proposal. May mga kanya-kanya kaming research center. Pumapasok po ang wikang Filipino na hindi naman marginalized. Sa katunayan nga po, ang lahat ng pagpapahayag namin, yun na po ang pinakamataas na kasanayan po sa research, e ba't inaalaw po kami na gamitin ang wikang Filipino sa aming pamantasan. The issue meanwhile garnered mixed emotions from university students. Okay na din yung Tagalog. Kasi po kung yung English naman din po kasi marami din po kasing hirap talaga na mag-English. Kaya mas ma-express din po kasi kung Tagalog din po. Kung English yung magiging uh, medium natin pagdating sa pag-aaral, uh, mas mahasa tayo when it comes to ano Tag dito, language skills. The Commission sa Wikang Filipino wants to inform congressmen that English can be used in schools but not as lingua franca or the mother tongue of children as respect to the culture and laws of the Philippines. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The DOJ justice boosters are exceedingly thankful to UNTV Cop despite landing on the third spot of UNTV Cop off-season game. Bernard Dati tells us why. They did not make it to the finals yet members of Team DOJ Justice Boosters are exceedingly thankful to be part of UNTV Cop executive face-off. Nauna nagpapasalamat kami siyempre kay Kuya kasi napakaganda yung UNTV. Hindi na siya nagbibigay uh, na chance sa mga players. Sa mga coaches din, nakatulad namin na naghanap din ng magandang league. So maraming maraming salamat sa sumusuporta sa UNTV Cup. Sana tuloy-tuloy pa rin. At nagpapasalamat kami at nabigyan kami ng pagkakataon makasali dito sa napakagandang liga na ito. It was the first time that the DOJ Justice Boosters were able to make it to the semifinals. They are also happy to help their beneficiary with the 250,000 pesos prize that they will receive from the league. The Boosters' chosen beneficiaries include Silong Tanglao Foundation. Foundation ay itinatag no October 27, 1989. Ang binibigay po namin servisyo sa, silang, sa mga bata ng center, unang-una po ay uh, shelter, pagkain, edukasyon, uh, yung, mga, yung mga basic needs na kailangan na kailangan ng, mga, ng isang bata na dapat na supposedly magulang nila yung nabibigay. Children in the foundation are overjoyed and thankful to the team DOJ for making them achieve their dreams despite their situations in life. Maraming salamat po sa pagtulong sa DOJ sa UNTV. Po malaking oportunidad po sa amin yun na mga pag-aaral po na mabuti at ipagpatuloy ang aming pag-aaral. Salamat po sa pagtulong sa amin. Hindi wala yung silong hindi kami mabubuhay. Daddies, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Coming up, France launches the first hydrogen-powered boat with zero emissions. 
The World Boxing Organization, or WBO, says the decision in the recently concluded Pacquiao Horn bout is final and can no longer be revoked. And you meet the artist with an unusual typewriting skill. More from Y News after this break. The World Boxing Organization can no longer change the decision of boxing officials on the recently concluded fight of Manny Pacquiao and Jeff Horn in Brisbane, Australia. In a response to the request of the Philippine Games and Amusement Board, WBO President Francisco Valcarcel says the decision can only be revoked if there had been a fraud or violations committed. WBO also insists that the officials who judge the fight are all professionals, honest, and have good integrity. It also says that it has no jurisdiction to revoke any decision on the fight as it is under the Australian National Boxing Federation. WBO says that it will be better if the board sends evidence of anomalies so it can conduct a probe on the issue. Despite this, the WBO says it will conduct a review of the said fight. In the sixth leg of the WISH covering on-ground editions, the WISH 1075 team visited Rosario Cavite to search for fresh talents. Since the auditions began in June, in June, 445 aspiring singers have already joined the competition. This July, the WISH covering team will visit Rizal, Pampanga, and Bacolod. The grand winner will take home 2 million peso worth of cash and a singing contract, a brand new car, and a housing lot. It is open to all aspiring singers age 18 and above. How about that first skill? How will and Darlene? Yes. Art. Mm -hmm. That's a very great art. Yes, it is very unique. Very unique, right? Do you have any skills? Well, I guess all of us have our own Drawing. skills, of yeah. course. Oh, it's, a, it's a weekend. Yes. Yeah. Happy, Happy weekend. weekend. Happy weekend. weekend, everyone. Those are the reasons behind the news. July 7, 2017. I'm Angelo Castro III. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am William Theo. And I'm Darlene Basingan because we need to know. We will always ask why. Thank you for watching. Why, why News? news?